Hello, and welcome to Beat the Nation GCSE Foundation Week 4 with me, Mr. Barton. Now, what is Beat the Nation? Well, thousands of students all around the country have been sitting quizzes that I wrote for the GCSE Foundation paper. And these are mixed topic quizzes on my Diagnostic Questions website. So what I've done is I've gone into one of these quizzes and I've picked out three questions and you can see those three questions on your screen. But these are not just any old questions. These are the three worst answered questions from that quiz. And I'm gonna set you five challenges. Challenge number one, can you get each of these questions correct? Then challenge number two, out of these three questions, what do you reckon the worst answered question is? And then can you predict what you reckon the most common choice of wrong answer is for each of these questions. And then can you get into the mind of students? Why might they have chosen each of these common wrong answers? And finally, if you were sat next to somebody who had chosen one of these wrong answers, how would you help them? Not only understand that you're correct, but that they're wrong. So what I suggest you do now is you pause this video and you work through these three questions with my five challenges in mind. And then when you're ready, Resume this video and we'll go through them together. Good luck. Okay, have you got your answers? Nice one, let's go for it. So to build up a bit of drama, I'm gonna reveal these in reverse order. So I'm gonna start with the least worst answered question out of these three, and it is this question here. So let's take a look at it. The mean of this set of five numbers is six. What number is behind the star? Okay, so we've got five numbers. We've got five, we've got one, we've got ten, we've got this mystery number, and we've got four. And the thing we know is that the mean of these five numbers is going to be six. So how does that help us? Well, mean is all about finding the total of something divided by how many numbers there are. I'm going to call that n. And we know that when we do that, when we get the total of these numbers and we divide by how many numbers there are, we're going to get the mean, which in this case is 6. But we also know one other thing about this. We know how many numbers there are. We know there are five numbers. So we know that when we add up these five numbers and divide it by 5, we know our answer's got to be 6. So the question then remains is, what, what's that total got to be? Well, you can do a bit of rearranging here. If we've got something divided by 5 equals 6, I reckon if we multiply by 5... That's going to give us our answer. Our total has got to be equal to 6 multiplied by 5, which is 30. Whenever we add up these five numbers, the total has got to be 30, because then when we do 30 divided by 5, we're going to get our mean of 6. Well, that's not too bad, because we've already got four of these numbers. We've got 5 plus 1, which is 6, plus 10, which is 16, plus 4, which is 20. So they all already add up to 20. So this number here has got to be what's needed to get it up to 30, which I think is 10. Now, it's always worth just checking. So imagine we knew that that number was 10. Would, would the question still work? 5 plus 1 is 6, plus 10 is 16, plus another 10 is 26, plus 4 is 30. And to work out the mean, we do 30 divided by 5, which we know gives us an answer of 6. So I'm claiming the correct answer to this is 10. Have we got it right? Yes, we have, but look at that. Only 52% of students agreed with us. 24% of students thought that the correct answer to this was six. Now, where does six come from? Why might a student think the correct answer to this question is six? Well, let's read some real life student explanations. Here's one here. Six, because there is no six and the mean is six. So a student here believes that for a set of numbers to have a mean of something like six, six must be one of the numbers. And we know that's not true. What about this one? If you put them in order, six becomes the middle. Now, what are they doing? They're conf that student's confusing something. Whenever we talk about putting things in order and working out middles, we're not talking mean anymore. We're talking median. So I see what that student's done there, muddling up two measures of average. Okay, this is the second worst answered question, and it's the algebra question. Here's Molly's attempt to rearrange a formula to make P the subject. On which line, if any, does she make her first mistake? So Molly is trying to rearrange to make P the subject. And we can see there at the last line there, she's got it. Well, she's claiming she's got it, P equals. The question is, does anything go wrong in between? So what I'm gonna do is let's take it line by line and figure out what Molly's done. So to get from this initial question to line one, 
Well, if you look at the right hand side, it used to be 3p take 1 divided by 2, and now it's just 3p take 1. So that divided by 2 has been removed. How's Molly attempted to remove a divide by 2? She's multiplied both sides by 2. So the right hand side was 3p uh, subtract 1 divided by 2. She's multiplied by 2, so now it's just 3p subtract 1. And yes, she's remembered to multiply the left hand side as well. It used to be v, and now it's two lots of v. So I think line 1's fine. That's a good start from Molly. Do she keep it going? What's going on in line two? So the right hand side used to be 3p take one and now it's 3p. So to remove that subtract one, Molly has added one. Has she done it to the left hand side? Yes, she has Look, 2v add one. So I think that's fine. She's done the same thing to both sides. Is she gonna go all the way here with line three? So what's happened here? So now Molly's done a bit of a two for one job here. Firstly, she's flipped the equation round. So it's like she's got 3p equals 2v plus 1. That's fine to do. But now she's changed it. Instead of it being 3p, it's just p. So what's she done to get from there to there? Molly has divided by 3. That's fine. Has she also divided by 3 here? 2v plus 1, the whole thing divided by 3. 2v plus 1, the whole thing divided by 3. So I think that's fine as well. So I don't think Molly makes a mistake. Every step here, she's done an operation, and crucially, she's done that operation to both sides of the equation. So I think that's fine. Are we right? Yes, we are, but look at that. Only 47% of students agree with us. More than half the students who answered this question believes Molly has made a mistake somewhere. Quite a few think it's in line one, most think it's in line two, and quite a few think it's in line three. Let's have a look at some of those student explanations. So here's a student, um, and 20% of students think this, that believe the mistake comes in line two. Why would they think that? Why would they think something's gone wrong from line one to line two? Let's have a read. She can't add the one as she's already used it to take away the three with. So what's going on here? She's added one, but the students believe, well, she can't add one because that one's already been used up here. But no, that's 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 not true. And um, if you add one to both sides, it's okay. That subtract one, add one cancels out. And you've got to add one to the other side as well. So that's fine. Every single step in this, this Molly solution is, is spot on. And if students believe that a mistake's um, occurred, well, they've got to be think really carefully about how to manipulate their, their algebra. How did you get on with that one? It's quite a tricky question, that one. Well done if, if you did, if you got that one right. And if you didn't, don't fear, as, as we've seen, it's a difficult one. Just make sure that you take your time, have a look at that question, listen to my explanation, and just think, does that make sense? Um, which brings us to the worst answered question, and it is this one here. Now, confession time. I'm useless at these. I'm really, really bad at these. Um, I always have to get out the tracing paper. And even then I struggle. And I know some of you watching this video can just see this, can just visualize this. I can't. Um, so I'll be honest with you. I've done this on tracing paper um, just to double check that I got it right. And I'm pretty sure that the center of rotation comes, uh, sorry, the, the new point once it's been rotated 180 degrees about this 0.44, I'm pretty sure it comes out there. And as long as I make sure I read this the right way around, it's got an X coordinate of two and a Y coordinate of seven. I think two seven is the cent is the uh, new coordinates of this point. Now there are some kind of dodgy tricks you can do with this when you're doing 180 degrees. You can do things like this where you can see that it's gone up three and across two. So you go across two and up three. But I'd be very wary of tricks like that because it's easy to misremember them or travel in the wrong direction. I'd always advise getting the tracing paper out. So. It seems I'm correct, luckily, but also lots of students are also struggling with this question like I am. Six, seven seems to be the most popular uh, choice. Uh, that's B with 27%. Well, why would a student think it was six, seven? Um, really interesting this. You're rotating the, the uh, shape about the point 180 degrees, which is basically flipping the shape about the point. So this is a student who's kind of gone for a bit of a, a shortcut answer, um, if, if you will. They've decided here that instead of rotating it around there, what you're essentially doing is flipping it, maybe flipping it this way. So they've ended up with the wrong answer there. But as I say, the, the way I see students go wrong with these kind of questions is when they don't take their time, get their tracing paper out and, they, and, and instead try and do it in their head. So always take your time with these questions. You'll always be allowed a piece of tracing paper for rotation and please use it. So how did you get on with those three questions? As I say, don't worry if you struggle with them. They are difficult questions. But if we confront them like this, we take our time with them, and we listen to these explanations, hopefully we'll get our heads around them.
Um, if this has whet your appetite for a bit more, if you head to my diagnosticquestions.com website forward slash uh, revision 2019, there's 20 of these quizzes for you to have a go at. And if you're a teacher and you'd like to set these for your students, um, head over to ed.co.uk. You can set up a schema work or set these as individual quizzes. And if uh, it'll be marked for you, you'll get a load of insights. It's all completely free. And if you want any help getting your students on the system, the best thing to do is send a spreadsheet with your kids' names and class names to hello at ed.co.uk. And one of our team will be happy to help you. And I'll be back with another Beat the Nation soon. You take care of yourself. Bye for now.